Uh, let's see. Were you guys talking about the um, talking about the animation changes when I got here? H is uh, H is BBH uh, fix. Okay. Uh, let's see. So general news. Uh, probably mate JK is going to be our next viewer. That's I think that's in RC now. Um, but there's a few issues left to hammer out. Um, performance improvements is probably after that. We're um, we, we're we've just got a couple of bugs, and I wouldn't be surprised if that one winds up in, being in RC for a little while because uh, there's. You know, there's like there's threading changes. You usually get some unexpected issues when you do that kind of thing, but we'll see. Uh, we did have one upcoming viewer change that I wanted to chat about with the uh, third-party community, which is uh, support for multi-factor authentication. We are close at this point to having a viewer ready and and the appropriate backend services to support it. Um, uh, to have a viewer ready to, uh, you know, implement that so that if somebody has opted in to multi-factor auth, then you know they can be prompted for their token through the through this viewer, and um, and that that will all work. Um, but of course, if you if somebody's opted into multi-factor auth, you really want to um, you really want to make sure that. Uh, that that's enforced uh, across the board. That if people who are trying to log in with any viewer still have to uh, still have to be able to do that. So uh, I have it kind of, kind of requires third-party changes to go with it. Um, so uh, uh, sorry, was there a question? I have questions. Um, okay, so uh, is that going to be opt-in from the viewer or from the SecondLife.com? I believe it's opt in from uh from secondlife.com. Uh Brad is is the the person here who's been working on this. Uh Brad feel free to jump in if I'm mangling any of this. Hi there. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um yeah, it's it's integrated with the existing uh secondlife.com uh MFA. Um if there are other options that people want for that, um we we should take them as as feature requests, but uh we we so far have been proceeding with uh, with the simplest extension of what we had, um, which is that. Um, I yeah. just said my concern was that um, if uh, so, obviously Firestorm users could go on the SecondLife.com website um, and opt into two-factor authentication. Why wouldn't they? And then realize that they can't log into Firestorm um, until we can get obviously an update out. Uh, what kind of infrastructure is involved in the viewer for that yeah um i i can go into a, a lot of detail about that um um and i have a, a a doc uh with the uh required changes for viewers to implement support for that uh but the 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 top level answer is there is a grace period uh where there this will only um be enforced for viewers that have opted in to to implement support for it um and during that grace period uh, people will not be locked out uh, unless they're using a viewer that officially supports the MFA features. So uh, when they go to log in, say on Firestorm that doesn't have two F, uh, two factor authentication, it yeah. won't ask them for it. It will not uh, until. Um, so let me just post the doc here. Um, basically, how, how yeah. would the uh, so basically you're just looking at what viewer is being logged in from, and if if not on the list, then just bypass. Well, we're looking for the parameters in the login request that are involved in implementing MFA support. I so see, if the login I see. request okay. includes MFA-related parameters, then then we treat this as an MFA-enabled login request. Okay. Um, and that is when we enforce it. Um, there is a configuration switch that we will flip later on after the grace period is over, where we will start enforcing it across the board um, for viewers. And, and that way, you know, when people turn on MFA, they can be assured that anybody trying to log in from any viewer can only access their account if it has, has passed MFA checks. Um, but obviously, for testing and, and rollout purposes, we, we don't want to do that all at once. Um, 
yeah, it certainly does mean that, uh, Naran, uh, which would be nice. I, I don't know how many old viewers are still out there. Um, uh, here's the thought. Um, Copybot viewers, death too, could be, maybe. That That's true for accounts that have opted into MFA, right? Like. Right. It's still an opt-in process for each user account. So of, course, of course. Requiring people to use MFA would be a much longer Much term later journey, kind of thing? Of okay. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, you need to have an authenticated email address for every everyone who's using MFA, which we certainly don't uh, across the board now. And uh, I suppose it, it too early to sort of guess what kind of a grace period there will be. Um, we were just starting to talk about that. I mean, obviously, we want um, we want to give plenty of time for people to integrate this and and test it in their in their viewers. So um, I I don't know. I I don't have a, actually a realistic number, but on the order of months potentially. Um, I don't I don't know what's realistic there though. We'll we'll have to keep uh, having some give and take on that. I think. Yeah, I guess partly this is a question for the you know the the. TPB community, which is why we're bringing it up here. Um, you know, what's a realistic time frame for getting a, this sort of thing incorporated? Um, well, I mean, Firestorm has such a rapid release cycle. Um, oh, yeah, you're, you're said no one, putting out a new release every Said no night, one ever, you? right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I suspect we'll probably be one of the last. It, it's not because we want to be. Um, so we're it actually finally have betas in QA right now. I'm about to get a release out, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, and um, hmm. so normally, I mean, I, I like to try to stick to a, a quarterly release cycle. So every three months. So if we had a release out uh, at the end of this month, we'll say, which is being optimistic, let's be honest. Um, so that's uh, March, February, so maybe May. May we could have something out with two-factor authentication. Would that be stretching it too long? That, that uh, seems I mean, in the ballpark of what I expected, I but yeah, potentially work. Yeah. Uh, so Brad, if, if, even if it's not, even if we're not actually requiring viewers to support, uh, you know token entry people could still log in through the website if if they had an issue like that right and they could so, disable it yeah you can still go disable it you know as needed on the website if you need to log in with a viewer um, uh, i just reckon you enter your token through the website yeah so there is a design for that we don't have that implemented uh yet but ah. uh, if it if it becomes needed uh like if and this would be a way to also pre-validate things for unattended accounts, scripted agents, in some ways, if you wanted them. I mean, multi-factor auth doesn't really make sense for, for unattended logins, but, um, I mean, if people request that feature, we can, we can try to do it. Uh, but it would work similar to the way sort of Google and Apple's um, MFA... Um, system works where if you have a login in a in a client that's that's rejected due to mfa reasons you can go approve that client uh through a website um and then the next attempt from that client uh will work um uh, th so that was a proposal um that we have not yet implemented but if, if there's demand for it we might prioritize something like that um, a couple other things. So Beck has a good point. Uh, we do have Firestorm does have a, a three version rule, which, whereas we give people, you know, a, a three releases of Grace to uh, update Firestorm, and that's basically because maybe this next release will suck really bad and people can't use it, so they get to you know roll back. Um, so that might be a bit of a problem. I have another question though. Uh, so. I mean, two-factor authentication is fantastic. I wish it was done long ago. Uh, there's a lot of phishing, as you know, that goes on in Second Life. Um, will a two-factor authentication also apply to secondlife.com? Because if, you know, my password gets stolen or phished, they could still log into secondlife.com and then remove two-factor authentication and then get into a cell through my, through the viewer. Yeah, so... Um... 
so the current uh, two-factor uh, protections on SL.com are enforced for particularly sensitive uh, transactions, and I don't know have the full list of, of which things are protected, uh, but things like password changes and um, and enabling and disabling uh, MFA are, are definitely included in that. Okay. Um, so if you have opted into MFA on secondlife.com, um, that will protect that um, as well. So does because I'm just thinking, it, it does, for the most part, it does. Um, it leads me to one more question. Um, okay, let's say user has enabled two-factor authentication. Um, but uh, based on the viewer credentials trying to log in, uh, if it's, say, a, a Firestorm version that doesn't have it, uh, they'll still be permitted to log in to Second Life. But with that two-factor authentication, it still protects their SL.com stuff then. Yeah, that's correct. Um, okay. And there's some text questions in there, I see. Oh, yeah, I missed that. Yeah, there's a question about will people be able to pick and choose what MFA is used for? Um, could you could you clarify what different kind of categories you're thinking about there, Coffee? Yeah, so um, to my understanding of the web MFA side of things, um, it's pretty much just one preference. Like if you have MFA enabled, then we enforce it on all of the pieces of, of secondlife.com that have MFA support. And um, I haven't been working on the website, um, for example, like the Linden Dollar uh, buy uh, stuff that you mentioned. So I'm not sure if that's rolled out there yet. Um, I think the web team is is gradually moving more and more things behind the MFA gate uh, for people who have opted in. But uh, I don't know that we have a clear roadmap for, for which features get protected by it when. Yeah, um, I think that's the idea. I think it is protecting most financial stuff right now on um, on SecondLife.com. Um, I should I should check that again, but um, but that's the idea. And then um, it's sort of opt in, you know, on the viewer side uh, during this grace period, where if you're using an MFA viewer, it will support that. Um, Oh, your financials too. Yeah, um, I don't think we want to get into sort of feature gating specific features in the viewer. I think um, that would be pretty hard to do. Um, the way the way I, the architecture works, but um, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, we hadn't really considered that, and it would. To introduce a lot of complexity on the back end if we tried to. I think it's it's pretty likely that, you know, if you get as far as you're authenticated on the viewer, then that's, you know, going to affect all the features you have access to through the viewer. Uh, Brad, there's also a question back in chat about uh, what uh, apps were supported and were there, were there options for authentication other than, uh, you know, things that you need to use... Uh, a mobile device for uh, yeah um, so yeah so currently we only have support for the the time-based one-time password apps um, so that's you know Google Authenticator style or Authy or I forget one of the other ones LastPass has one I think too um, 
so those you know apps are are, are all we have support for right now are you um, looking at doing uh email because there are a lot of people that don't have smartphones yeah agreed um i have not been involved in those conversations um but i know it's something we've been aware of um um i think yes uh we should we should if people are interested in others um in other types of things like u2 uh, um, what the u2f uh, keys and stuff like that then we should uh file some jiros and, and get those triaged um <laughs> uh, for for what we want support for um i think from my perspective, it, it's not going to be immediate that we would add support for those other um, authenticator methods, but um, but we should. I mean, email, the plan is email the should be. Yeah. Will be just the one. Yeah, email's a good request because it. It's, email it's, should be the minimum, honestly. Yeah, I don't know that that. So yeah, so we have email uh, as a recovery method right now for um, for the existing. Uh, web uh, two-factor uh, implementation so that's part of why it's also tied to having a verified email in the first place um, so if you go to opt-in on the web like secondlife.com today um, first you have to make sure you have a verified email then you can enable um, multi-factor auth and there is a support process for recovering your your login through email if you lose your your um, your auth device, um, and I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, adding a fallback where you could just do a single uh, challenge through through email uh, verification that might be a, that might be an option. Oh, that's uh, Kitty's got a very good question there. Uh, so a lot of them will do this, uh, you know, don't ask me again for 30 days, or uh, you know, recognize this device and don't ask me again while I'm on this device. Uh, is that something you might entertain? Um, yeah. So the current policy is is 30 days uh, for each uh, challenge, um, and that matches what we have on the website as well. And that's device based. Um, it's based on saving uh, the the response. So uh, so yes, it's saved in your account um, on that device um, in the secure storage I see. with okay. with your password, kind of. Um, and so that that signed hash of your um, your validation um, that has to be saved by the viewer and presented with future logins and and that that validation you know, certificate, it's not a certificate, but uh, th that validation hash uh, is is valid for 30 days, currently. Well, that, that's what I'm sort of wondering back too, is that, um, I, I'm just wondering how this could be used. <laughs> I mean, obviously we know why you're doing it, it's the right thing to do. Um, but if it couldn't also be used by the lab to uh, make it harder for uh, copybot viewers and some of these less savory outfits. I'm not sure how, how does that work? I mean, you, you know, it's basically a way of authenticating that somebody really is the person that they say they are and whether the person that they say they are is unsavory is a little bit outside the scope of what MFA can check, isn't it? Okay, that's fair. Uh, okay, in Kitty's question or example, though, um, I suppose that'll be that would be more accurate. So I, I don't know if you're familiar with RLV. There's uh, RLV viewer, 
type viewer where um, essentially you give somebody permission um, to essentially hijack your account uh, and uh, you don't get it back until you know they decide to let you get it back I guess Kitty will I'm sure explain that more to me Uh, okay, so Kitty just posted her question there. Yeah, so they can actually, so different viewers can can actually read each other's cached passwords. Um, so, I mean, yes, they can, yeah, I don't know that we have policies yet for whether or not we think it's okay uh, for viewers to, to inspect that data um, that was saved by another viewer. I I mean, I think we don't we don't prohibit it uh, currently, but um, but that would yeah that would apply similarly to this you know sort of sensitive um, hash data. Um, yeah, I think it's so. Yeah. So basically, it, you know, without putting extra effort into into blocking that, um, yes, it would just work. So you'd pass MFA on logging in with one viewer, and then it would get saved in your secure store um, next to your password, and then other viewers would also be able to use that if they implemented MFA features. So. Um, so yeah, that would work if that's what people are looking for. All right, well, if we don't have any other uh, questions on MFA, we can throw the floor open for other discussions. Um, I was supposed to give somebody shit. Excuse my language. 
I don't remember what for. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I came in at the right time. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, uh, all. I don't. I think it was. I think it was you, Veer. I think you were on on the receiving end, but I don't uh -oh. remember what it was for. Is it no, it's the equivalent of, do you know why I pulled you indefinite over? Indefinite future. <laughs> uh, well, you don't want to remind me what it was, but it'll come to me after the meeting, I'm sure. Uh, Beck, you don't you don't remember, do you? I'm getting old. I can't remember anything. You can message me when you remember. <laughs> oh yeah, there's that. I could do that. <laughs> okay, Naran's got something. Buy buy me some time, Naran, while I go through my chat logs. Server side AO, yep. Oh, uh, that. And right that if you like, I guess. Um, that that was that it, Kitty. Was that it? Was that? It was something about the AO. Is that it? We're writing about animation overrides. I believe it was something about the AO, because you guys, this was in the meeting last week, the the last meeting, right? The one I missed that I really wished I had been here. Yes, there was a uh, conversation about it. I go to a lot of meetings, but yeah, I know it's come up recently. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, the AO. Uh, do you got questions? Because I got a voice. I, I, I believe it's coming back to me now. It's coming back to me slowly, slowly. Uh, it was something that you didn't understand the AO or, or its use or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, the... I think my question was, is this a request for being able to replace uh, an animation with another animation or being able to replace the mapping from, you know, agent state to animation with a different animation, right? There's, 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 a, there's a difference there, right? Only the, the server has only a limited notion of what state you're in, but it does try to keep track of like, are you walking? Are you flying? Whatever. And then... You know, so it, it, it's so right. So it'll say, okay, you're flying, so you should play, you know, I don't know, the fly one animation. Um, is, is that what we're talking about here? And if so, how is it different from the animation override we already have? I, I admit I am a little confused about the whole thing. Uh, okay, let me just pull up the Jira. Because I don't want to be as clueless uh, as I am right now. Was that the Jira, uh, Naren? Oh, just give me a sec. That was the Jira. Okay, one sec. I got too many tabs open. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so for example, um, uh, as you may or may not know, Firestorm has a built-in AO. Uh, we like it because it does not use scripts. Uh, and therefore, uh, it doesn't lag in a, a laggy region. Um, some of the ways that people uh, will use the client AO, for example, um, is there's like say ground sit, right? Ground sit is a is a agent state, I believe. Um, but so if you're on a dance floor and you want to reduce uh, region lag, just as an example, um, because a, an agent is standing, therefore they're there's physics going on. If you ground sit, but in the client AO, you replace the ground sit animation with a dancing animation, then your ground sit, as far as the region is concerned, but as far as the, the um, observers are concerned, you're, you're actually dancing okay. uh, as a way of reducing uh, physics lag, for example. Um, uh, there's, uh, what other examples can I come up with? Uh, let me just read text. Message to do what LL said animation right does. Right. All right. So Kitty says she's she's happy with what LL said animation override does, but she just wants to be able to do it without having to use an LSL command. Is that right? 
it's essentially a cap to give the same function. Right, a cap so that we can have some new viewer UI that lets you manage some like table of, of overrides or something. And so that's a, another thing that's very, very common. So there's a, an old animation override called Huddles, very popular even today. Um, it, it practically can crash a region all by itself with one person. Um, but people absolutely love it because they're able to change their dance dynamically. So as you're dancing, you just click another button, you're in a different dance, another button, you're in a different dance. Um, and uh, the trouble is it's uh, at least huddles is loaded with scripts. So being able to do that. So you guys are requesting it with the viewer. Is that how I understand it? Or you guys are looking to, you guys are asking for LSL function. Okay, not what I'm saying. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think it may be that there's various sort of semi-related desires around animation, and they're not <laughs> all exactly spelled out in this JIRA. All right, Neron says uh, animation override is a viewer function. Uh, I think we were talking about this last time. There was also a request to be able to have a pool of kind of multiple animations associated with a given state and then like it would randomly pick one of those or cycle between them or something um which i think is that that's not that's not what l said animation override does now right it's it's new behavior So is that part of the ask as as you understand it, Niran? Do you need multiple overrides or just one? Yes, but back as a as a first step, just a a cap that that allows you to mimic the uh, behave that behavior from the uh, from from the viewer. Okay. Well, you if I gave you the uh, if I gave you the cap with the current functionality of one animation the viewer could control cycling that's a good point uh, one question I had about trying to put the cycling semantics into the cap itself was that we need to pin down, you know, what you have control over. I mean, is it like you, you've got, you know, n different animations and it automatically switches between them at random or does it need to deterministically or, you know, do you need to be able to control the time interval between cycles? And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different stuff that could go into that that's not... Uh, you know, immediately obvious from the kind of basic desire to be able to have more than one override. Well, if we if we did a single if we did a single override and pushed the uh, uh, if we did a single override and then pushed the the what to change logic 
to the viewers. Um, that would make a lot of that would make a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. The viewer the the viewer side can be much more flexible about that. Exactly. Yeah. So then, if somebody wanted to implement a viewer that that you know cycled every five seconds, or one where it was a controllable parameter and a debug setting, or whatever, then they could just do that. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. And, and, and just for the record, like as far as um, the value of uh, this type of a, a job to get this done. Everybody and their uncle and their monkey and their cats in Second Life use AOs for like everything. Um, and if you go to any, literally any dance event, club, whatever it is, where there's you know avatars jumping around dancing, uh, most of that script time is gone due to the the, the scripted um, AOs. Having it yeah. in viewer has an enormous impact on. Uh, uh, region spare time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, if we could implement this in the viewer in such a way that, you know, it met people's needs and they actually changed to using it instead of the inefficient AOs, then there would be a big benefit. I mean, history strongly suggests that most people never update their content no matter what new options are available. But, um, like me, know, it's a, it's a nice thought. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have so, a, says the guy with AOs. a non mesh avatar, you know. Well, I mean, Firestorm released the client AO years ago, uh, and it is far from perfect. Uh, it, it was as popular as breast physics was back in the Emerald days. I don't. I'm assuming most people who did adapt to it then still use it today. Like it, it's, it's one of those things where people say, "I use Firestorm because of client AO." And, and to be honest, uh, you know, our integration could be better. I'd want to throw I'd want to throw in a uh, a changed event. But... Uh, Beck, do you mind if I link that video to the Jira? Okay, thanks. Oh, that would be nice.
Okay, I'm looking at the uh, movie about the Firestorm animation overrider. So we've got, you know, picking the state. So it's currently set on standing. And then you've got a bunch of different animations there. Uh, what are you choosing at the top? Are you picking an item to add to that list? Or do, does that mean something else? Sets of animations. Okay, so you can manage sort of multiple different animation overriders through the, the same interface. So then those are all active at the same time, or you have some ability to control which ones are active? Or, or only one is active at a time. All right, so so back in this Giazzo thing, there's it's only one that's active at a time, and you're picking which one. Is that right? Okay. Right, Pantera, but the 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 viewer decide the viewer decides which one.
Yes, but in the in the in the short term neuron, just a uh, cap that mimics uh, uh, mimics LL LL sal would would be good. Would 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 satisfy the uh, the request. Right. It's not. It's it's not a full solution for everything that has been discussed, but it is it is a a step in the right direction. And, and you make a good point. It would give you a chance to, to experiment and and see what else could be done. You would still need. You would still need scripts in some cases, which is why I'd also push for a uh, additional bit in the LL changed event. Uh, I'm sure there's one on the LSL library. Does Linden Lab still have that? Do you guys still have that? LSL wiki? No, LSL. LSL wiki? Portal? Yeah, it's yeah. there. It loads kind of slow, but it's there. There's got to be a free AO script there. There are a lot of AOs that use a ridiculous amount of scripts. And also, people will dump you know, 999 script, uh, animations into it, so when they wear it, it, it just takes down the region. Yeah, Zao is another one. Very popular. I I actually still have some Zao that I use. Yeah, I, I have Zao. I don't, I don't use any now because I just use the Viewer AO. Um, can somebody <laughs> please fix my foot? <laughs> well, I, the, um, there are the the AO that I have, some of the AOs I have from Zao uh, also control an attachment, so. Yeah. Right. So you, it needs to know what it's. And, and there will, like, we can't eliminate all AOs because most, you know, avatars, um, especially non human avatars, have their own AOs. So that will always be a thing. Right. Well, I mean, for, I'm, I'm using an AO here that uh, controls my walking stick. Right, right. Right. And, uh, so on an animation change, it also sends a message to the walking stick that says, reposition yourself this way. Yeah. And, and I, I, I mean, you, you, you can't eliminate all of them. They're all, you know, there's use cases like that that I don't think a viewer can accurately do. And I don't think a creator, I don't know if a creator would be able to integrate that into a viewer or server-side AO. Um, well, it, 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 
where, yeah, you where, need a bridge. Uh, yeah. Well, what I where, when I was commenting on uh, uh, adding an event uh, or adding a uh, uh, another bit to the changed event, um, that would do. Um, uh, that would allow an attachment script to know when an animation, when the animation state of of an of an agent has changed. I'm not sure how much information would be available at that point, but since I'm designing this off the top of my head, yeah, of course. A little bit what Peck said. Well, I, I, it would I be a really nice thing to, to sort of sit down and brainstorm, because uh, I, I still think it would be very valuable, um, certainly to region owners, uh, event holders, um, and uh, and just having you know better performance in a region during big events. And it would take probably years before people gradually stopped using, you know, scripted AOs. But you can have my you can have my Zao AO. When you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try it from a overly complexly animated avatar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bento hands. Yeah. Uh, what's the use case? What's uh, client side physics? That would be scope creep. Ah, uh, I think that's scope creep. I oh, yeah, <laughs> that would be a different, yeah. That's uh, does uh, Firestorm want to buy a Havoc license? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That I'm interested in how how to go trying to convert FlexiPrim code to bones. Yeah, I would guess not well. Prims. In theory, the FlexiPrims could be implemented with hardware scanning, but uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so the uh, the updating of the bones and the FlexiPrim update. Well, you know how our Prim system works. It's got the profile. It's got the path, and FlexiPrims uh, make the path floppy. Um, right now, we basically regenerate the Prim from scratch every time you do a FlexiPrim frame update. Uh, on the CPU, it'd be super cool if we could figure out how to turn the uh, the path into a set of bones, and then use hardware scanning. But there's a lot of content out there that really wants to uh, have the flexi prims lined up just right. And last time I tried to do something like that, I broke all the furry tails.
Gasp. Uh, that's bound to provoke some response. <laughs> oh, it did. <laughs> Lots of chittering, I expect. Torches and pitchforks. Right there. Yeah, All right, so folks. Well, thanks for coming by this week. We're at time, uh, as usual. Feel free to hang out. I'm going to run off and do other things. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to look into this AO thing. It means a lot, actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, we'll uh, see what we can uh, what we can do there. And uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah you too. Thank you, everyone.